Well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, good to have you here. It is a snowy day in Saskatchewan, or at least in our part of it. And so we have wonderfully been able to use technology. And so we're back in my living room. But it is good to see you, however it is that you join us. A couple of quick announcements this morning, as always. Our bulletin is on the website at www.lafleshlimerickunited.com. If you're looking for that to follow along, everything will come up on your screen as well, though, uh, if you're looking for that. Next week, there will be no morning service at La Flesh. So there will be a 930 service in Limerick, but the 1130 service in La Flesh will not happen because we're going to have our white gift service that evening at seven o'clock. Uh, we're going to hope that the snow is not happening by then as well, uh, but we will be joining for worship at seven o'clock in La Flesh for our white gift service. Come and enjoy with us. That will be virtual as well. Uh, and we're going to have the kids there and it's going to be an interactive uh, service for all ages everybody the the kids will be leading us but everybody's going to get to take part so i hope that we will see you then if you can't make it to the seven o'clock in uh, la flesh on sunday evening you're welcome to come on friday evening at seven o'clock to limerick as well it will be the same service our blue Christmas service is going to be on the 21st of December. Sometimes blue Christmas is called the longest night of the year and the longest night of the year actually is the 21st. So it will be Tuesday, December 21st at seven o'clock as well, but that will only be virtual. We had a much better turnout. Uh, people seem to really like coming online last year. And so you can access that either online or on the phone, same as for our regular services, but it will only only be online and on the phone, not in person. So that's Tuesday, December 21st at seven o'clock. We give thanks for Dwayne and Penny Filson who have shared their gift of music with us today. And our music license number as always is A609189 of One License LLC. Our music is reproduced with permission. We begin our worship as we always do by acknowledging the territory. As a covenant people, we are the inheritors of the promises made between God and our ancestors in faith. As people living within the area of Treaty 4, we acknowledge that we are also inheritors of the promises and responsibilities of a treaty relationship with Indigenous communities especially the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota, Soto, and Cree, as well as the Métis who call this land home. May the life and work of our church always respect our covenant relationship with God and our treaty relationship with our neighbors. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletin or on your screen and is from Feasting on the Word Worship Companion for Year C. As always, you read the bolded parts. A day of worship, a day of rest, a day in community, a day to be blessed, a day for offering, a day for welcoming, a day of remembering, a day of reckoning, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship. And our Advent candle lighting is adapted from Emma Morgan of Eastern Hills Community Church in Melbourne, Australia. We come together in the midst of a busy season to take a breath to breathe in together the life that God gives, to listen to the beat of God's heart and the blessings and lessons this season brings to us. Each week of Advent, we will light this Advent wreath. With its light comes our prayers and our stories. The candle for this second week of Advent is the candle of peace. Today, the flame of this candle reminds us of the peace that Jesus brings into this world and his presence with us. 
Jesus said, I give you peace, the kind of peace that only I can give. It isn't like the peace that this world can give. So don't be worried or afraid. And so as we light our candle of peace today, I invite you to think about where you have seen God's gift of peace lately. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you want to bring peace and freedom into every life. We thank you for the peace you have brought to us. Help us to be witnesses of the peace you bring and share it with those who need it most. Amen. Our Advent candle lighting hymn is He Came Down. We started it last week when he came down that we might have hope. And now it's that he came down that we might have peace. I invite you to sing along with me. you pray with me our prayer of approach which was written by the Reverend Susan A. Blaine. Holy God we long for your peace and trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn toward you to change our lives and welcome you in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace that our worship together may open us to the challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who is coming, we pray. Amen. One of the great and ancient uh, Advent hymns is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And so I invite you to sing with me number one in Voices United if you have it. It's nice and easy to find. It is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we're going to sing verses one, two, three, and then skip over until seven. Yeah. 
Our scripture today comes to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses in them and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and will I fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile the story of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So if we were in person, I'd be asking you questions right about now. So you can all be grateful that it's a snow day and you get to be off the hook for actually answering things. But I, I want you to think for a minute about what you would have in your suitcase if you were going on a trip to, say, camp or away to your grandparents' house when you were a kid. When I was a kid, my suitcase had all of the regular stuff in it. You know, you make sure that you've got some warm clothes and some cold clothes because you never know what it's going to be like at camp at nighttime. Uh, you make sure you have your socks and your underwear and your toothbrush and all of those things. But my suitcase also always had one more thing. It always had a letter from my mom or from my parents or from my sister or sometimes all three. I always think about that when I think about this letter from Jeremiah to the exiles because he is writing to a people who are not where they want to be. He's writing to a people who have been taken away from their homeland by force, and he is still where they want to be. He is still in Jerusalem. And when we think of the prophets, when we think of prophecy, we tend to think of somebody just standing up and preaching and, and giving the word of the Lord. But Jeremiah can't do that to the people that he needs and wants to talk to. So he writes them a letter. And, and this letter is full of, you know, he's often called the wailing prophet or the weeping prophet for a reason. There's, there's a lot of uh, despair in there. But in this section, he's also got that little bit of hope. He's got that little bit of reminding them that they're not forgotten, that they are still loved, that they are still within God's reach, that they are still within God's loving arms, even though they're not where they want to be. And I've always thought that that was what made going away a little easier when I would go to camp or to my grandparents' house or wherever it was that I was going, knowing that someone at home still loved me, 
that someone at home was always waiting and excited for when I would come back. That was always a, a really neat piece. And so as soon as I would get somewhere, I'd start unpacking and looking for my letter. And so as I was reading from Jeremiah today, I thought, oh, that's, that, that's kind of what he's doing as well. He's reminding them that there is someone waiting at home, that there is someone there and that God is there to know that they are always, always loved and that there is a plan that they will be brought back. Our next hymn is number 173 in More Voices. It's a somewhat new one to us. It's called Put Peace into Each Other's Hands. And I invite you to join us in singing. mentioned the letter from Jeremiah and you'll uh, <laughs> forgive me if every once in a while I want to break out into song and he was a bullfrog but from the letter from Jeremiah is written to the exiles who are part of the first exile the kind of practice exile uh, from Jerusalem to Babylon in 597. If you were here last week you'll remember that uh, that we, we talked about the, the Babylonians came and took away the king and the elites and the leaders of Jerusalem, the leaders of Israel in 597. And then 10 years later, when the people who were left in Jerusalem decided to rebel again, uh, Babylon came and said, yeah, that's enough of that. We're going to totally destroy the city now and take everybody else into exile as well. 
Last week we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, who was one of the ones who was taken to Babylon during the first deportation, and so was prophesying and speaking from that time and place. And today we hear from Jeremiah, who was not, not taken in the first deportation, and so he is still in Jerusalem. As I said, he is where the other exiles want to be, and of course in uh, 10 years or less he will also be in Babylon with everyone else. So there's this interesting play. I love that we get to read these two back to back because um, we get to hear from the different perspectives of where they are and what how that influences their prophecy. As I said, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet or the wailing prophet uh, because a lot of his a lot of his book is not exactly happy. Most of the prophets aren't. Uh, you remember a few weeks ago we read from Amos, uh, who was called the prophet of doom, which is you know a, a fun nickname to carry around with you for your whole life. Uh, but this particular piece of scripture, this particular piece of Jeremiah's prophecy, Jeremiah's writing, Jeremiah's book, is it's kind of got that little bit of hope and at the same time just settle in. Be where you are. This isn't going to change anytime soon. And so this is this tension between get comfortable with the exile, get comfortable with the idea of being away from home because this is going to last for a long time. And at the same time, don't get too comfortable with the exile. Remember that there's more to your life. Jeremiah tells the people that this is going to last for a while. We imagine that there were others, we know there were other prophets in that time and place who were saying to the people who were in exile, we've got to fight, we've got to make this happen, we've got to escape, we've got to figure out a way to get back to Jerusalem, back to where we want to be. And the only way we're going to do that is if we rely on ourselves. Jeremiah is saying the exact opposite. He's saying, no, you don't need to, nor should you fight. You're not going to be able to get out of this that way. It's just not going to happen. It's going to take 70 years. It's going to be not you, not your children who are going to return to Jerusalem, but your grandchildren and their children will be the ones who return. Get comfortable with that. Start putting down roots, build houses, plant gardens, marry, have families. Don't put off for tomorrow. Don't, don't put it off saying, oh, well, we'll be back home soon and then I'll start a family. Do it now. Get comfortable with where you are. Pray for the prosperity and the peace of the city that you're in. Let your hearts be at peace in the city that you're in. But at the same time, don't forget whose you are. Don't forget where you came from because God is going to bring you back. God isn't going to forget you. God loves you and has plans for you. They just might be plans that take a long time to come to fruition. It's this weird tension between be comfortable, but not too comfortable. Put down roots, but don't let them get so far down that you can't move them again. And so I wonder, as I've been thinking about this scripture this week, I, I wonder what that means for us. What does it mean for our lives to be at peace where we are? What does it mean for our lives to continue to hope for and look towards that which is to come? What does it mean? Where, where have we as individuals or as a community of faith or as a society, where have we been fighting against something with which we really just need to make peace so that our lives can be better? Where do we keep thinking that we need to rely on ourselves when really we can rely on God? Where in our lives are we not comfortable, but we could be? 
Where do we need to let that peace of God go into our hearts to make a home where we are for the moment? But at the same time, where have we become too settled? Where have we let those roots go so deep that nothing, come hell or high water, could bring us apart from it? Where have we been too much settled, too much that we forget God's call to remember that this is not our ultimate home? That this world, this the way that the world is, is not how God wants it to be? Where have we become too settled? It's a hard tension to hold in our hearts, in our hands, in our lives, to be comfortable in exile and not too comfortable. But that is essentially the message of Advent. As we head towards Christmas, we remember that this world is not quite right. It's not exactly what God wants for us. But there is a time when it will be. So we hold on to hope and peace in the meantime. But that's hard. Advent is a hard season. It's, it's slowing down. It's that time of waiting and working, waiting for that which is to come and working to make it a reality. It's that tension of an already and a not yet. A time that we remember that Christ has come into the world and yet has not yet come to finalize and to make all things new. It's that time of making peace where we are and yet holding on to hope for where, where we are going and what is yet to come. I love the season of Advent with its candles and, and the Advent wreath. And I love that they build on one another. We light the candle of hope first, because if we didn't, there would be nothing to build onto. We have to hold on to the hope that there is more, even as we are at peace where we are. And so we light the candle of hope on that first Sunday, looking to the future, looking to the one who is to come. And then on the second Sunday, we light our second candle. We light the candle of peace, letting that peace and that hope just go so far down deep into us that they, they come into our hearts. That it's not a struggle to look to the future. It's not a struggle to even look to the moment. And that's, I, I say that like it's easy to do. It's Heaven knows it's not, but that's, that's the idea of Advent, is that God is with us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. God is with us, regardless of whether we get it perfect or not. But every year, we get to grow more and more. Each year, we come into the season and we go through the motions. We light the candle of hope. We light the candle of peace and of joy and of love, and then our Christ candle. Each year as we grow, each year as we light them, we learn something new about God and about ourselves. And so like those exiles that Jeremiah was writing to, we remember that it doesn't matter if we're not where we want to be. God is there. We hold on to the hope for tomorrow, and we foster the peace for today. Amen. As people of the United Church of Canada, we proclaim our faith in so many ways, but one of them is with the words of a new creed. And so I invite you to join with me in saying these words together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, 
to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. We have been given so many gifts. And so each week we take the time to come back and, and give those gifts back to God. Sometimes we do that in the form of a monetary offering, our treasure. Sometimes it's in our time or our talents or our life or our love. Whatever it is that we bring to God this day, we bring it before God now as we sing our offertory hymn. God, these are the gifts that you first gave to us. And so we bring them back to you now as a token of the love that we have for you. May they be used to further your work in this church and in the world around us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning is from the Christian Aid website, and it is uh, thinking about those especially who are waiting, those who are in exile in many different ways, uh, not just physically, but for a lot of people, they are not where they want to be at this time of year, not where they want to be um, in general, that they're not able to go back to their homelands. And so we pray. Accompany us, God, through the waiting. Accompany those displaced waiting to return to the land. Accompany those in refugee camps waiting to go home. Accompany those in conflict zones waiting for normalcy. Accompany those in violent homes waiting for silence. Accompany those imprisoned waiting for justice. Accompany us, God, through the waiting until your kingdom comes. And we pray in the name of the one for whom we wait, as we say together the words he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is one that Dwayne suggested to me uh, this week, and then I had stuck in my head for the rest of the day. So I'm hoping that after we've sung it, that it'll go out. It's called Let There Be Peace on Earth, and it is a wonderful hymn that I invite you to join with me and sing. Oops.
Friends, as you go from this time and place of worship, let peace be in your hearts. Let your life proclaim the hope and the peace of God. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of her countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen.